What's up, everybody? Um, just so everybody knows for an update in case anybody was wondering. Um, everybody I know from back home is fine. Um, nobody, nobody got into any... Nobody that I know, friends or family alike, no one got into any serious trouble. Um, I did have... Some of my friends were displaced from where they live. Uh, they haven't necessarily lost their homes, um, but they had to leave and stay with friends and uh, co-workers and stuff like that. Uh, I, one of my friends did lose his car, but uh, you know, my mom, my sister, and my niece, and all them, they got real lucky. Like, they, a bunch of houses in their neighborhood flooded, theirs did not. Uh, the water receded right before it came into the house, so uh, they dodged a bullet. I dodged a bullet as well because uh, I had my mom check on my storage unit today, and uh, it didn't take on water. So I didn't lose I, I didn't lose my car, didn't lose any tools of the ATV, my my trailer, any of that shit that's in there. Well, the trailer probably would have survived, but nothing else would have. Um, so I, I got lucky. Look, because the road that my storage unit is on, it's a four lane highway with a median divided in the middle. Uh, it turned into like a river basically and it looks like it took on it flooded like hardcore But it looks like it took on all the water and all the water drained into the road in front of my storage so and The way that they got the it's a gravel lot, but the way they've got it set up It's a it's elevated enough to where it had enough drainage To where none of my shit got destroyed, so it's good news, you know, and other than that nobody that I know personally uh has gotten hurt or anything like that or or had any real significant losses other than maybe just some minor damage or whatever but you know and I'm going home in two weeks and then we'll see you know we'll see what we'll see what what things lo are looking like down there maybe I'll you know I'll cruise around I know I'll be cruising all over town anyway just doing different stuff but maybe I'll make some different videos show you guys uh, what things are looking like if I if I can anyway but uh, while I'm waiting for my dinner to cool down uh, on this same topic hold on there's something I wanted to touch on real quick hopefully real quick I'm not gonna I'm trying gonna try not to drag this out but you know what there is something that I because I've been paying a lot of attention to social media trying to keep updated on what's going on with everybody and everything back home and <clears throat> I keep hearing about this goddamn this Joel Osteen thing right I'm sure most of you know who the guy is they've been talking about him a lot uh, basically uh, let me try to break it down just a little bit Joel Osteen is a televangelist pastor uh, in Houston who runs Lakewood Church yeah, he's he's blown up pretty big as far as his books, and now I think he's got his own channel on satellite radio uh, and stuff like that. But that's what he is, and he he runs uh he runs I don't know if he owns it or what the fuck he probably owns it, but he runs Lakewood Church, which is this massive fucking. It basically uh, he used to be in a, a smaller church, which was kind of your normal big ass church. Like you've seen big ass churches that are like big sprawling buildings. You know, but it was like a normal big ass church. Well, then he moved into this goddamn. Uh, he moved into the Compact Center, which, for those of you who are not from Houston or whatever, Compact Center is basically an arena. It's like a basketball stadium. I think it was. Don't quote me on this, but just off the top of my head, I think it was where the Rockets played before they built the Toyota Center. I think. I don't know, but it's an arena, is what it is, and the Vent Center. So I'm sure you guys could Google all this stuff, and you'll you'll find out all the information. Well, look, I've never personally really liked Joel Osteen, and the reason why is because, you know, I, I think he's a fucking fraud. You know, I just, look, however you may, regardless of what religion you are, regardless of uh, how you feel about religion or how religious you are, regardless of all that stuff. That's not that's not really the point here. The point is that this guy made millions off of other people's faith. 
He made millions off of preaching. Like, those of you who don't know, I've never heard this guy talk. He's a pastor, right? But his, his sermons are basically uh, how to better your life. How to kind of, it's kind of like, he's a motivational speaker, but he kind of uses God. Like, the way I worded it to my buddy the other day is, he's a, he's a motivational speaker that uses religion to brand his product. His product is his sermon, right? And I read an article the other day that kind of personified it quite well to where he kind of has this this kind of this kind of view of things to where his his brand of uh I don't know, his his brand of doing things is basically that uh he preaches tithing really big. He's really big on tithing. And the way he sells it is if you are... The, the more you give to talk to the church, you're giving to God. And if you give to the church and then thus give to God, God will give back to you or something of that nature. You know, and I... That's... That is fucked. You know what? That's fine. That's a... There's nothing wrong with that premise. The difference is... The, the, this is the way I see it. All right? When you give your money to a church, the tithe that the Bible calls for and all that stuff, that money's not supposed to go into the pocket of the holy man. Okay? That, the pastor, that money's not supposed to buy the pastor a multi-million dollar house. That's what I say. You know, I'm not a super religious guy. I was raised Baptist. You know, and I've been to different, I've been Baptist churches, I've been to Christian churches, I've been to Lutheran churches, because my stepdad's a Lutheran, right? I've been a bunch of different, I've been to fucking Lakewood Church, and I've heard Joel Osteen speak when I was younger, because a buddy of mine, his parents went to Lakewood Church every Sunday before he bought the, the compact center, and I tagged along once or twice, just because I was hanging out my, with my buddy on a Sunday, he's like, dude, we're going to church, you want to go with us? I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll roll with you and shit, so I'd go with his family, and I heard this, I've, I've been there before, you know, and, you know, the, the money, just, I, I've seen that what this guy preaches, and I just, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of any of it, you know, when you give money, the reason you give money to the church is so that the church can, can perform charitable acts for the community, right, which leads into what what I'm really talking about here in this whole controversy, right? And this is the reason why this became a big fucking deal because a lot of people were thinking the same thing that I was thinking, you know, is that a community that has made you filthy rich is suffering right now, right? Lots of people. There's, and if, if you haven't heard this, I'll, I'll let you know right now. Greater Houston, or I'm sorry, Metro Metropolitan Houston, inside the loop, the city limits, about two, little over two million people. Greater Houston is about seven million, maybe more, probably more. They estimated it's 6.6 .6 million people. I say it's more because I think we've probably got anywhere from half a million to a million undocumented immigrants that are off the grid that, that the government doesn't even know about. So I'd say it's, it's upwards of eight million people in the greater Houston area. That's... I'd probably say the the mainland just north of Galveston all the way up to Conroe and Baytown all the way out to Sealy. That's a lot of fucking space and everywhere in between is greater Houston as far as I'm concerned, right? Now, you've got a lot of people that are facing hardship at this time, right? And this is a community Rather, whether or not these people actually attend your congregation or not is irrelevant. It's irrelevant. You are, you, you, he, this guy was in a unique position, a very unique position to help the people in this city. And all he did was tweet out just bullshit, like just motivational fucking lines, you know, just the, just, just fucking just babble like oh you know god works in mysterious ways you know uh you know god will bring peace to us blah 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 and all this shit just meaningless shit that doesn't help anybody maybe made some people feel better because that's what he does you know that's fine 
Uh, you know what? All the people, there's a reason why his congregation is so big. People go there. He, he makes them feel really good. You know, he kind of kind of gets them psyched up for the week and helps people face hard times in their life. You know, that's what he does. You know, he he, he, he gets people to, you know, he helps people out basically with, with financial troubles, which is mostly what he helps people out with, and just other little, you know, obstacles that, you know, people face and shit like that. And in return, you give 10% of your fucking monthly gross to this guy. And that's what you can return. Whatever. Fine. If you're, if you're that, that kind of person, you know, that's fine. If you're all into that shit, you do you. What I'm trying to say is, this guy has this massive fucking church, right? And in the middle of this fucking storm, like, right in the middle of when we're... The, the city is just getting fucking pissed on with rain. And there's f rampant fucking flooding. People were taking pictures of this guy's church like... I remember the first pictures I saw, I think they were on the 29th or the 30th, I can't remember. But people were taking pictures of the parking lot saying, hey, there's like, there's no flooding in the parking lot. There's no flooding on the roads to, the access roads to get to it. Which later on they say there were, but I saw the fucking pictures on the internet. The inter the pictures are there. Like, the pictures where there's like 20 cars parked out front. Which is, the, there's a parking garage behind it anyway. You know? So, I don't know, I just, this guy has the money... He has the fucking, the, the facility to help people, right? All he needs to do is talk to, talk to local law enforcement, which we have a shit ton of in the city of Houston, you know? That's one thing, uh, just to, just to digress just a little bit, a lot of the, there's a lot, a lot of major cities that I drive through where, like, you almost never see a cop. In certain roads in, in certain cities, like 294 through Chicago comes to mind, which is the toll, toll road bypass around Chicago, there's almost never police on that highway. I, Atlanta's another good example. You know, there's just cities where it's like you almost never see a cop. That ain't the fucking story down in Houston. We have maybe, damn, 10 different departments. Not not even talking about the, the individual precincts of each department. But we have at least, we have... Uh, Houston Police Department, we have Metropolitan, the cops, the Metro cops, then we have Harris County Sheriffs, then we have the Texas State Troopers, which is the Texas DPS, then we have all the different constables, and then all the different precincts of all the different constables, and then all of the different cities in Greater Houston have their own police departments. You know, Magnolia PD and uh, uh, Jer Jersey Village PD, Bel Air PD. You know, and so a Pearland PD, Baytown PD, all, they all have their own dedicated police departments. There's, there's thousands of law enforcement officers in Greater Houston. All he needed to do is communicate. It just, he should have been way out ahead of this. He should have been one of the first people to publicly, publicly go like start helping people. You know, you want you want a great example of who actually did that? Mattress fucking Mac who runs Gallery Furniture. Mattress Mac, who owns and runs Gallery Furniture, been running it for a long, long time, right? Famous in the city of Houston. Google him if you wanna, if you wanna see about him. Great guy, I've, I've talked to people that have actually met the guy, super great guy, you know, and he's, he's, uh, he's always, always helped the community with different stuff. If stuff, something like this happens, he's, he's, uh, he's given out free furniture before, like a whole bunch of free furniture to people. He's, he's, you know, I think he's got uh, his own charity and shit like that. I saw a couple pictures the other day where the uh, national, he's have the national guard is in his store sleeping on certain mattresses and stuff like that. He's sheltering as many people as he can at both locations, both of his store locations, and he always does that. You know, and I'm willing to bet Joel Osteen's got more money than Mattress Mac does. I guarantee it. Which is funny, because on his commercials, he say, I guarantee it. <laughs> you know, I'll save you money. <laughs> but anyways, he used to have these commercials that would run. They were real funny. But anyways, you know, and Mattress Mac actually works for a fucking living. I mean, not to say that Joel Osteen don't, but his money is given to him. Joel Osteen basically lives on donations. Well, you know what? There's another thing I want to address real quick. This is, this is something that a lot of people that want to defend this guy. Some people just wanted to blindly defend him. 
which you shouldn't, don't blindly defend someone just because they're a pastor, just because they're a man of God, that doesn't warrant automatic defense. If they've done wrong, don't defend someone who's done wrong. You defend people when they've done right, regardless of who they are. You shun them when they've done wrong, regardless of who they are. Doesn't matter if they're a pastor. Doesn't matter if, if they're a felon, but they do something right. You know, you should, you should respect that person, even though they're a felon. They've been a convicted felon, they've been in prison. They do something good, you should recognize that as a good thing. But anyways, people that are defending this guy will say, and they've said this for years whenever I bring up this subject. Well, dude, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't take money from his church anymore. You know, he stopped doing that years ago. Now he just, he just, he makes all of his money off his books. Like, well, yeah, because it, like, first of all, Lakewood Church made him rich and made him fucking famous to the point where when he started putting out books, he was making so much money off the books, he, he stopped taking money from the church and just started, you know, living off the money he makes from his books. Because now, you know, he's fucking famous. He's got this huge following. He doesn't need the money from the church anymore. And I believe, this just me, he came out with that and publicly said, I'm no longer taking money from the church. Oh my God, he is so awesome. Even though we've already made him a millionaire. You know, let's all, let's all go out and buy his books and continue to make him more rich. You know? I think he, pur he purposefully did that to to shut people like me up that say he's getting rich off selling miracles to people. Regardless. You know, he, he got himself to a point where he was so fucking famous, you know, and had such a huge ass following and he started putting out these books, which I'm sure are all just the same thing, just same book every time, just reworded, I don't know. You know, you'd probably, it's probably just, you know, how to use God to, you know, weather financial uh, instability and hard times in your life or something like that. You'd be better off reason, reading Susie Orman or uh, one of Tony Robbins' books, in my opinion. But anyways, uh, look, I have nothing against someone who, I don't have, I have nothing against rich people. I have nothing against successful people, you know? Because I feel like that's the point. That's the goal. Right? That's the American dream. <laughs> Is to become rich and, you know, never want for anything based off of something that you've done that America has allowed you to become rich off of. I don't understand people who, on one hand, they're, they're like, fuck the rich. And we hate the 1%. But on the other hand, that's all they ever dream and aspire to be. You know, it's like people, like if you, if you, if you listen to rap music, like popular rap music, how the fuck could you say that you, you have anything against rich people when that's all they fucking talk about is becoming rich or being rich. And that's it. Just about, you know what I'm saying? Has anybody, what, has anybody seen this fucking juxtapose? You know what I mean? But anyway, I'm, I'm getting a little off topic, you know, I just, this guy, <sighs> This guy was, he was, I'm, I'm telling you right now, he was in his, he was in his, uh, his big ass multi-million dollar house in Rice Village or wherever the fuck he lives. And he was, he was sitting back, hanging out, you know, probably just watching the news and uh, doing whatever the fuck he does, writing his next book, hanging out with his, his fine ass wife or whatever he does. You know, he just riding out the storm. <sighs> Honey, man, I, I need to put out another tweet. I need to say a few more words of God, and that'll that'll help the people of this city. You know what I mean? You know, and now all of a sudden he saunters out of the shadows once he sees a, a looming PR nightmare. He sees what's starting to happen because then the national news picked up on it, and talk show radio picked up on it, and social media picked up on it and started trending and became this like, where the fuck's Joel Osteen? You know, where's all that money that these people have been giving your church that you're supposed to help the fucking community with? Where the fuck are you? And all of a sudden he's like, oh, I'm here. I, you know, my, the doors have always been open. The, the doors to my, I don't know. I don't know what he said something in a press release, but my doors have always been open. I'm, I'm here to help and blah, blah, blah and shit like that. Dude, the fucking, the video, the, the pictures are there. They're on the internet and they ain't ever going away. 
There will be memes about this for years, I'm sure. You know? The picture, there's the pictures there, and I think they try to release some video of like some flooding and and like a like a lob the lobby or something like that. Whatever, it doesn't it doesn't fucking matter to me. If they could put people in the George R. Brown, they could put people in the fucking the Lakewood Church, the Compact Center. As far as I'm concerned, I'm sorry, you can do it, especially since a lot of a lot of parts of town didn't ever lose electricity. I'm sure the Compact Center never lost electricity. A lot of a lot of parts of town never lost power. But you know he comes out, and all of a sudden now he's trying to save face. It's too little, too late, motherfucker. The reason why, and here's here's the thing, like if people from other states, and I'm not even talking about emergency service first responders, regular ass Joes like me, are. Are, are saddling up in their pickup trucks, loading up with food and water and boats and hauling ass to Houston, you can too. People who have way less means than you. People that probably took off work in areas that weren't flooded, that took the week off, burned up vacation days or personal days or sick days to come help pull people out of their, their flooded houses. People that, you know, are going to have short checks next week because they were busy in Houston helping people. If those people can fucking help, then you can too, motherfucker. That's the way I see it. You know what I'm saying? I never really liked this guy before, but I figured, you know what? People want to give him the... People want to just hand their money over to him? That's fine. I don't know. I'm sure I would uh, assume that his church does a lot of charitable things, I guess. I would have to imagine. All the goddamn money that that place pulls in. Place pulls in. How do you think they bought that fucking place? They bought an arena. You know what I mean? Some churches, there are churches in this country struggling to put new roofs on their on the building, and you know what? They, 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 to replace their carpet that's twenty years old. These guys pulled in enough money to buy a goddamn basketball arena. What? You know what I'm saying? No. Now, there's another thing that I'm I'm dying to address, especially if any of you watching have this sentiment. Because a lot of people are saying this. And I want to set the record straight real quick right now. A lot of people are saying, well, come on, guys. Look what happened in the Superdome. Okay, there was rapes and murders, and we don't want that to happen again, right? Okay. Let me set something. Uh, let me set the record straight here. In Houston, and in Texas in general, our law enforcement, they earn their fucking paychecks. They don't bail the fuck out when things get bad. Okay? I'm not trying to take shots at New Orleans here, but facts are fucking facts. Okay? And when the, the tough got going, so did the fucking police force. Our cops didn't. Our cops have been working night and fucking day. They've been pulling fucking like 18-hour shifts, 16-hour shifts. Okay? Not just our all our police officers and first responders. Cops and first responders from all over the country. But... In Texas, our police officers, they they earn their fucking paychecks. Never in a million years would we have a repeat of what happened in the Superdome in New Orleans. I'm here to fucking tell you. Fuck, we were... Our state was going after people that were fucking price-gouging bottles of water. For Christ's sake. You know? <laughs> I, I think in, when Katrina hit in, in New Orleans... Nobody gave it. People, there's mass looting and, sh and and shooting and shit and murders and shit like that. We were straight arresting and shooting at fucking looters. Our, our, our attorney general is cracking down on price gouging in the middle of the storm, while the storm was still going. They our our attorney general set up a call center for people to call in and report people that were price gouging to be investigated. We weren't even allowing people to charge more for bottles of water. You think we're gonna let something like the fucking Superdome happen? No, I'm here to tell you. We got way too many fucking cops in our town and they do their fucking jobs. So, n no. You know, if, if that's what you think, you, you, you've never been to Houston maybe. Or you just haven't spent enough time there. You know, I, and I always like to tell my family when I drive through places like New York City or Chicago or especially Atlanta or any town where people drive like the world is ending they do 90 and they never signal and they cut everybody off they're switching lanes 
You'd go to fucking jail for doing shit like that in Houston. Because our fucking police force does not let that shit fly. Driving down the shoulder lane when traffic backs up? Nah. We don't play that fucking game. You will get fucking stopped doing shit like that. Because our cops earn their paychecks. You know, it ain't, it ain't like, oh, there ain't a cop to be found. I can drive however I want. Nah. Ain't the case. You want to drive like a maniac? I guarantee you it's a matter of time before you get caught. In our town. So, you get that, you get all that shit out the fucking door. Out the window. You know, look, I mean, George R. Brown Convention Center, that fucking convention center is massive. It's huge. It's like half a mile long from end to end. If you started at one wall and tried to run down to the end, it'd probably take you 60 seconds running at full speed. It's pretty fucking far. Maybe more. You know, it's a, it's a big fucking place. We didn't have any rapes, riots, or murders in that place now, did we? And it's... It's, it's a comparable fucking size to the compact center as far as square foot, square foot goes. But, you know, we had, we had all our cops there and everything was... Everything was okay. Everything was kept under control. So get that whole Superdome shit out the fucking window. Just like people saying, well, they should have evacuated. I don't like, I don't like uh, this, the mayor of the city of Houston. I don't live in the city of Houston, which is, is hardcore fucking left. You know, like most major metropolitan areas. Uh, but uh, he made, I don't like the guy, but he made the right call by not calling a mandatory evacuation. I mean, maybe he could have... He maybe could have called a, uh, a, a voluntary evacuation, but look, like people were trying to put it out there on social media that it, when Hurricane Rita hit, millions, of, like or maybe not millions, but hundreds of thousands of people tried to leave the city, and people ran out of gas, sitting idling on the interstate. It was so backed up. It was backed up for miles, dozens of miles, because nobody could go anywhere. There's just too much traffic. Now we have ContraFlow. They they did that. They created ContraFlow in response to what happened in Hurricane Rita. Now, when ContraFlow is in effect, both shoulders, all the shoulders and all the lanes. So if uh, like I-45, if it's four lanes on each side, all eight la main lanes plus the four shoulders on both sides will be northbound. They will open it up to where cars can get onto the. Uh, the southbound lanes and basically they'll shut they start what they'll do is shut down all the on ramps to where nobody can get on going towards the city and they can open instead of just being three or four lanes north it's eight to ten lanes north same thing on i-10 headed westbound they have contra flow so it's like five lanes on each side headed out now there's 14 because it's five on each side plus uh all four shoulders you, you can use so it's contra flow but they but it's still it's such a clusterfuck that they were like look if, if the hurricane's not hitting us head on we're just gonna have to ride this bitch out I, he made the right choice he really did you know people a lot of elderly people died a lot of people fucking died people the national guard had to go out there and start putting gas in people's cars and handing out bottles of water because people were fucked people were taking more but all their vehicles people were rolling in convoys it was a clusterfuck but I, you know, I don't know what's to, what else to say about this guy other than you know what? It's too little, too late, motherfucker. You know, if it, it, too many people have dropped what they were doing, social media figures, everybody, like all kinds of fucking people have dropped what they were doing and jumped in a car or truck and hauled ass to Houston just to fucking help. You know, if I could, I would have been there helping. If I was there, I would be out on a boat. I'd probably still be out on a boat right now, pulling people out of their houses if I could and if I could I would have dropped what I was doing and I would have deadheaded all the way back all the way back parked and then gone to help people at least help my family help some of my friends out or something I would have done something you know what I mean I wasn't able to do that so instead I donated to a couple of charities you know just trying to help in some certain way right you know just but if you you know I, I, I that's that's why we're doing so well that's why we're we're recovering the way we are is because so all the people that came in to help uh, our community our city and the people within our city they were able to help that decided to help they came out to help the first responders 
you know, people that are, don't have, aren't worth 50 million fucking dollars, and people that don't have multi-million dollar houses, yeah, they were out there in the rain helping people, because that's all they could do, because they don't have the money, or they don't have a fucking basketball arena to house people in. There were people on Facebook housing people that, uh, whose houses got flooded. Strangers! Strangers were letting people into their, the people were letting strangers into their house to help them until they were able to either get to a shelter or get to a family member's house. You know, what the fuck did this guy do? He comes out, of, he comes out after this starts becoming a, a like the, everybody in the country starts pointing it out that he's not doing anything. Now he wants to come out and save face? No, fuck that. That's all I got to say about that guy. But other than that, everything's good. <laughs> Everything, my car survived, you know, my... All my friends are okay, and everything's, you know, getting, starting to get back to normal, slowly but surely. But, alright, I gotta eat dinner now. I'll talk to you guys later.